Welcome back. It's episode three. We've got a lot to get through, so let's not faff about with fancy intros with cows and time-wasting recaps. No, stop that. Let's go. The next target for investigation is the upper RAM section of the board. The three ICs in sockets are clues to previous work. Remember what lurked under the lower RAM sockets? Well, it turns out these sockets were not fitted by someone using a crowbar and a blowtorch. I removed all three sockets and found only very minor damage. The five remaining chips all look to be original. Nothing exciting happened removing them, so we'll skip forward. However, two of those five chips Ooh. were faulty. Faulty upper RAM chips can bring the whole system down. Ooh. And testing after removing all of them resulted in a spectrum still as broken as when I'd started. Oh. It's all progress. So, what does that leave us? The ULA should be okay. As far as I can tell, it's in its original factory socket. The logic chips are still of concern. And the capacitors, whilst not original, were potentially installed by a Neanderthal having a bad day. Sorry, I need to stop being so critical. I've made plenty of mistakes myself, and I'm sure I will again. Just not all of them at once, and not all on the same board. You might notice some of this was recorded out of order. The upper RAM is still in place here. I began taking the logic chips out earlier in the repair, but stopped when distracted by something else I was convinced was a problem. Squirrel! IC3 and IC4 are socketed. I mentioned in a previous episode this was unusual. And now, having seen under sockets elsewhere on the board, well, I don't need to expand on that really, do I? IC25 is out first. All looks factory fresh underneath. A socket is slotted into place. IC24 also disembarks without problems. No damage beneath. I scratched my head at this point and wrongly assumed the rest of the logic chips would be okay too, and then went off to poke around other parts of the board. But by dragging video clips around a timeline, I'm able to show most of the story of the logic chips in one go. The last non-socketed chips, IC23 and 26, come out without issue. Both chips are tested at my PC with my TL866 programmer and are found to be without faults. On the board, there's no damage to be found. I made sure to test all of the traces and connections and was hugely confident all of this was in good order. Uh, dough, etc. Which leaves the originally socketed IC3 and IC4, the ones that were in sockets. The ones I said were unusual. Let's slow down here and have a listen. No pin there. What the actual? Now, the lack of a pin could mean all kinds of things. Maybe it was cut flush to the board. There's no pin there. Maybe it was a damaged socket when installed. Maybe it dissolved spontaneously because of I don't know, acid rain. The real reason may shock you. Knowing what I'm likely to find under here, I take my time and free each pin, not wanting to create further damage. Prodding and wiggling until... Yeah. You can't see my face. It looks a little like this. <laughs> Those two bent over pins weren't even soldered to the board. The tracks underneath looked like this. The pins were laying across the bare tracks here. So even if by some random chance the pin was making contact with the hole it was meant to be inserted into, then it was also making contact with these traces. I've no idea how this happened. The person who fitted this socket must have known the pins weren't in the holes when they soldered it. Sometimes you make mistakes. Sometimes you make all of the mistakes, and this board happens. So that must be it then. I just need to install a couple of shiny new 16-pin sockets, test, see it working, and then we can all go home and have a celebratory cup of something hot and brown, or, or cold and fizzy, but also brown. Come on, come on, we all want our tea, coffee, beer. And cake too. Oh. 
Oh, come on. Cancel the beer and the cake. Um... Poor Parsley. You've no idea what you started, do you? Oh, look. It's our little crispy friend, R62. It's quite amazing how much these little components can take and still function. This must have been glowing cherry red at some point. Here's another Issue 2 board, and there's the non-crispy R62 resistor. The bands on this good one are brown, green, black. The gold band is just the tolerance and isn't needed to calculate the value. Brown, green, black equals 15 ohms. So what does the crispy one measure at? It's hard to make out, but I believe that reads 15.3 ohms. When I finally noticed the burnt resistor, I really got my hopes up, but changing a component that's still actually within its design parameters isn't going to fix anything. Oh, what the? That's new. Well, it's still not working. It's just broken differently now. TR4 and TR5 are normally one of the first things you check on any given faulty ZX Spectrum. But having checked the voltages numerous times, I'd no reason to suspect they were faulty. But running out of things to take apart and repair, I ended up here. TR4 was, as the owner James put it, installed with a warm axe. Not by him, I should add. What James does with his warm axe is his own business. But I'm assured he doesn't use it for soldering. James had installed a temporary bodge wire on the top just to get the power up and running. I decided to take it out and make a more permanent fix. These two pads are actually okay. They'll work for this. The third one here is destroyed. But fortunately, this is just a ground pad and the large area next door is all ground. So I can just bend the legs out a little and use this handy hole. There, that looks a lot better. While I'm in the area, I give the power socket, which looks new, a fresh splash of solder. None of that helped, still not working. I said a while ago I'd removed every chip on this board. That's not entirely accurate. The ULA is still sitting there in its socket like a goblin, goading me. If you remember, right at the start I tested the ULA in another spectrum, but the socket, the socket slipped under the radar. I don't expect anything under here as there's just no reason anyone would have removed it. Oh, that's not a good sign. No pin. Where have I seen that before? In fact, there are three missing pins. More missing legs on this side. This is the wiggle test. All the pins on the far side are free and wiggling nicely. A couple of the missing ones on this side are still stuck, which makes sense, they're difficult to wiggle if you can't get a hold of them. Another struggle to get this one out clean, but it did come out in the end, leaving a pin behind. Okay, I didn't expect that. Looks like a lot of the pins have corroded away somehow whilst being encased in solder. I didn't think that was actually possible. I know I shouldn't really be surprised by now, but seriously, this must have been removed at some point for all this damage to happen. And then someone looked at that socket with a significant amount of its legs missing and thought, yeah, yeah, that'll do. While the socket looks like it's been in a dirty street fight and lost, the board beneath is in excellent condition. This is unexpected, almost shocking. A good clean and a brand new socket, and I won't need to come back to this, probably. My blue tack. It's where you left it. Blue tack. Oh, that's hot. Crikey. Burning your fingers seems to have the same effect as inhaling helium or a swift kick in the nadgers. I tested it without expecting any difference in the result. After all, there wasn't any real damage and nothing should have changed. So much better. But... It's the same. Why? Oh. That's interesting. What? Turn around. Who are you talking to? Do what again? 
Oh, come on, do it again. Yes, come on. Oh, that is interesting. Well, it's still broken, but Parsley will give you the rundown. Right, so I've replaced the ULA. <laughs> Easy, Tiger. Right, so I've replaced the ULA socket and I've put in the diagnostic ROM and it's set to A. I can't remember which one that is. And this happens when I switch it on. And that was what it was doing, although it was a magenta screen border. And I thought that that was carrying on crashing, and then it went yellow and started doing some other colours. And that looks more familiar. That looks like the Brendan Alford. So that. Oh, it's gone. Means that either that IC or that RAM IC is faulty. I need to look that up. With a now partial success, I had something to chase. The diagnostic indicated either IC7 or IC12 as faulty. I wasn't exactly sure which diagnostic was running at this point. I'm a lot more familiar with its workings now. So I took a guess and removed IC12. I ran the diagnostic without the chip inserted and got a different result. Not quite what I'd hoped. I swapped the chip for a known good one and got the same result again. I swapped all of the chips and started to get random results. Occasionally, it would indicate a single chip was faulty. I'd swap that chip with another and the fault would sometimes follow the first chip, which really threw me off course for a while. But in the end, I surmised all of the RAM chips were actually fine, or possibly faulty, or probably fine. Something else must be wrong. So I found a possible problem. Right, as you can see, I've been scoping and investigating and I found something. So this is pin two on IC3, one of the logic chips. I think it's address line one and that's grounded. The other end of the continuity test is on ground and that's grounded. And that goes to pin two on the ROM, which is grounded as well. Right, I've just um, traced where this pin goes through. Uh, one sec. Clumsy. You can tell I chased my tail around the board for a while here. Okay, I've just traced where the pin goes. Um, this one here, it's this, it's this trace here, and it appears again here. And it looks like it zigs under here don't think it's well, it could be attached to one of these but the one of these could be just ground or is it and it appears here where that little bodge is red herring i reckon that's grounded it's under the cpu it's not but fine go chasing around the board for a few more hours see if i care pin two on ic3 which is address line one uh, that runs under the board here through this trace Oh, bloody thing. Clumsy oaf. Right. That runs under the board here through this trace. Don't think it connects to any of these. That's that's an earth. That is it there. Goes underneath here. It pops out here. And you can see where that bodge is. Cold. There's, but there's no earth around it for it to short to. Colder. So I'm not sure why it's grounded earth grounded um, it carries on uh, I'm, I think it's yeah it's that trace right under the socket under there colder um, don't think it's connected here but it's connected here to hit to this point here colder that via here and then to pin two on the ROM could you be any colder and then it goes through a via uh, it goes down the board to uh, one of these points. Freezing cold. I forget which one it is. That one there. And it runs across here under this uh, diode and it attaches to here. And then the other end of that diode is a uh, keyboard connector. Practically Arctic. So it's nothing from this point. Correct. It, I've checked everything 
that I can see. Warmer. As it makes its journey up here. Warmer. Uh, everything on the other side of the board as it goes up is fine. Warmer. I can't see that point there, but it's not grounded there. Volcanic, but for the wrong reasons. Pin two on 26. 26, pin two is not connected. Why is that not connected? So pin two on IC26 is meant to be connected to pin two on IC4. Pin two on IC25 is meant to be connected to pin two on IC3. I managed to get these muddled up, which sent me down a rabbit hole. Fortunately, that rabbit hole also contained the actual answer. No need to refresh the solder, this is all new stuff. Sometimes you get to the solution by following the wrong road. And all those pin twos went right out of my head as soon as I saw the bridge connection. <laughs> this bridge can only have been my fault. You little bastard. And shows how easy it is to screw up when dealing with uncovered traces on bare PCBs. But still, this is more progress. So I'm going to guess that that Right there is the cause of our problems. No, Lee, it's just one of the causes. You really should keep looking. Good grief. He sounds pleased with himself. I wish I could tell him what's coming next. Let's give that a proper clink. Maybe you should have done that the first time round. Oh, looks hunky dory. Can we just pretend that that wasn't my fault? No, this one is down to you. Side note, what did we say about assuming the first fault you find is the only one? We'll be back here a bit later. No money, sorry, nine. Well, that sounded a bit creepy. For the curious, this is a pine seal soldering iron. It's a TS100 clone, much like my last secure iron. But this one has open source firmware and is upgradable. I'm excited. Checking for continuity after installing a socket is a good idea, but it wouldn't have helped much with the last fault. When the traces run over the ground. board and between the through holes, it's cool. quite tricky to test for those. Will it work? <laughs> Will it work? You can tell I think it's fixed. In my heart, I fully expect it to work this time. Poor deluded soul. <laughs> I don't really need to put the other four logic chips in to test as there's only lower RAM in the board at this point. Nervous. You should be. Very, very nervous. I'm going to go for the bench power supply just in case I've shorted something else. Ooh. I'm going to put you where you can see what's going on. Fingers crossed. Ooh. Well then, it's a bit less broken than it was a minute ago. I think that's still got a RAM error. Well, it might be because there's still a RAM error. Just a guess. Yeah, it still thinks it's got a RAM error. Why? The red line in the border indicates one RAM chip is faulty. Switch off and back on and... Oh, oh that's not right. Now it thinks five of the RAM chips have failed. Inconsistent RAM faults are tricky to track down. Often they're nothing to do with the RAM itself. In fact, it's usually the logic chips which are the cause. But I was flying blind at this point. On the one hand, enthused by the progress, and on the other hand, tired and wanting it to be fixed. Not the RAM. I agree, it's not the RAM. Could be the RAM socket. No, it's not the socket. And now I have to break the news that this isn't a three-part series after all. I promise that the next episode will be the last, and you'll finally see if I manage to beat this spectrum into submission. Not long to go now. See you in the next one. Bye. Oh.